Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Account, and welcome back to the channel. There is a massive investment opportunity looming right now on FC24 with some of these brand new cards. Upgrades are coming, games are starting soon, there's still time to buy, but prices are starting to rise and I don't want you to be left behind. So I wanna talk about investing in these live and upgrading cards today because it has been one of the most profitable ways to make coins in this entire year of FC24. So we're gonna talk about that, the content that dropped yesterday and what upgrade packs and other SBCs that we're still watching out for could impact the market today. So very market heavy video today, guys. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new let's talk about SBCs from yesterday on a sunday where it actually wasn't as exciting maybe as i thought it was saturday left us with a big impression of content yesterday on sunday was not that crazy it was still okay especially because of one SBC. but we'll start off with this 90 plus icon player pick which man i'll say it again I'm just not into icon player picks anymore at this state of the game with the icons that these are giving out. The icons that are in packs right now, the greats of the game, the SBCs that we're getting are way more interesting than these. Like the Drogba, the, the Crespo even from yesterday, I would rather do one of those than get one of these icons unless you're hitting a top tier card, which is virtually impossible to do for these icons they're just behind the curve 250,000 coins this SBC it doesn't even feel like it's worth the gamble you might as well go do something else instead of do this that's just my take they still did not add the Golazo icons to it but you can tell that people are still interested in these icon player picks guys look at the state of the market some of these fodder cards have risen up a little bit yesterday 88s from 10,000 coins spiked all the way to 12k. Now there could be a little bit of a, a player SBC impacting these prices too, but fodder is up a little bit on that mid to low tier. So if you invested on the weekend, like we mentioned, I think Friday night and Saturday, it was a good time to invest then. Those cards are starting to rise. They'll probably rise a little bit more, but that SBC yesterday definitely influenced fodder as did potentially the first of two player SBCs yesterday, which was Hernan Crespo, right? This was leaked. We were expecting it. He finally dropped. The card itself looks pretty good. There's a glaring stat here, 80 pace, that is the big problem. And a lot of people are saying, well, Nate, you put a chem style on him, it's not that bad. Sure, maybe, right? Every single other stat category, though, the pace, the shooting, the dribbling, looks unbelievable. Even 99 heading for an aerial power shot and technical plus Crespo, who also has chip shot and finesse shot. And of course, it's down to the upgrade to this card. I think the price is what EA has really messed up here, but I think I also understand why they made it expensive because it's an Argentinian icon and who's one of the favored nations in Copa America? Argentina, right, to defend their crown as they won last time. So this one has potential though, guys. A lot of people are thinking, what could this Crespo look like if he were to get upgraded? And that's kind of what you have to think through if you're processing this SBC. He could be 97 rated after the first upgrade. The second upgrade, he would get either a 99 stat boost or he would get a fourth play style plus. If this card got finesse plus, which he already has finesse, so maybe they upgrade that to finesse plus, and he gets a plus one boost that Argentina scored four goals, more so of a when, not an if. This could be a really, really good card. Of course, he could get a 99 stat boost as well if they would boost his passing up to 99. You're talking about a 98 pace, 97 shooting, and 97 dribble with 99 pass Crespo with three play style pluses. He would also be very good. But still, when you think about that, 1.5 million coins is a tall asking price for a card of this Crespo nature. If you're an Argentinian fan, it's still one that you can craft and you can still get a really good version of Crespo, but it just feels like for most of us, probably not the SBC that we will want to be doing. But again, the upgrade potential is there. Now, let's talk about the SBC that is a must complete. Guys, I think this is honestly the biggest W, the biggest, best SBC of Path to Glory. Of all the ones that we've had so far in the short time this promo has been out, this one is clear number one. Even after I glazed Joe Gomez yesterday and I completed the SBC, he's in my team, Joe Gomez is. This card is, I think, a better value than Joe Gomez. It's French. Upgrading for sure, Bradley Barcola. Now I'm saying that, watch France get grouped or something crazy, right? There's always that sort of variable there, but very highly anticipated youngster, PSG. A lot of people had crazy Evos of him earlier on this year. Remember, he was one of the cards that through those evolutions, the glitched stuff during like the Winter Wild Cards time and into January, people already had three play style plus glitched versions of him. Here's a five-star, four-star Barcola with 99 pace, 96 dribble with 
technical, rapid, and whipped pass plus. He can play on the right, on the left, or at striker. His stats look really, really good. And, of course, he is live and upgrading. And the best part is it only costs 170000 coins guys this is a must complete just for the fact that it's this cheap he looks this cracked in game already people are saying actually that he is very very overpowered in game especially considering the price tag that's something to consider here but for this price for the upgrades i mean it's france guys right you would expect a france team to be able to at least get one win in that first game probably of their um, matchups in the euros and then probably get three wins as well and get at least a little bit into the tournament this card by the end if france go ahead and win the euros this is going to be what a barcola for 170,000 coins could turn into could turn into right again there's the plus one overall upgrade or the five star five star which he would go to five five if they win the semi-final and go to the final and of course the finesse shot plus is added to this uh concept card of an upgraded barcola you know who knows what play style plus they would give the card but like this is what it kind of could look like you know you get the maxed out dribbling you get plus three to the shooting to the passing five five he would be nuts right it would be an absolutely insane card by the time all is said and done if he gets all the upgrades so again that sbc you can tell i'm flipping by the way this is a 96 percent upvoted sbc honestly wild and i think it's just because of the price it's only two squads so get that one done use them as a super sub the only kind of complaint that i would have to say about this is the evo version of olise is not too far off what that barcola card is right now but again the whole point in doing this is not to get a card that's good right now i mean it is good right now but you're also getting a card that has the potential to be even more insane down the road with an upgrade or two or three or beyond so that barcola spc is making some waves and it, honestly i'll say this too it's kind of crazy that the price for the luis diaz is eight hundred thousand coins and that barcola is only a hundred and 70k they're they're different right luis diaz has his own set of play styles his own body type and game but he's got four star weak foot five star skills and barcola's five four and the price difference is you know i'm glad that i didn't do diaz i started saying that at the beginning of the weekend i'm glad that i didn't do diaz because there's other species that have come out that i've liked better so that's just kind of the that's been a uh like a quality you've wanted to try to incorporate into your ultimate team as the year goes on and even now like maybe waiting to do some sbcs just in case something else good comes out in that situation for me personally i'm glad that i waited so with that being said we just mentioned an evo let's go check out the evo that was dropped yesterday too i don't know it's a decent one it's kind of like a six out of ten evo it's paid that's the biggest downside to this but it gives a really good playstyle plus with intercept plus and a lot of people are probably going to have a card like this bastoni in their club that they can evolve and get to be pretty cracked now when i look at my club i don't have a ton of great options in here i don't want to put somebody into an evo who already has the play style plus that's being given out so i'm definitely not doing collins yoshida or a kanji a kanji is one of the better looking statistically uh upgraded cards from this evolution but no thanks he only has two play style pluses this Varan for me would be just a little bit behind the curve. Yeah, sure, 86 pace. I think I'm going to end up doing Chris Richard just because I'm trying to do USA center backs. And he would look pretty good, not the most insane. But guys, actually, for this evolution, some of the best cards that I've been seeing have been Evo chains. There's been a lot of hype around this version of Bissek. If you get his 87 rated inform from a Team of the Week player pick, which I did last week, and then put him into an SBC... That was not smart. If you put him into the incisive pass master and then into supreme defender, you can double up on the card since the overall max for this SBC is 91. Or sorry, for the evolution, supreme defender is 91 overall. You can get into a 95 rated Bissek with 99 physical, 92 pace. And, uh, you know, incisive pass under center back. Okay, whatever. He doesn't have inter uh, anticipate. He has an intercept plus, but no anticipate on this version of Bissek. So... A lot of people are doing this evolution, and there's a couple other combinations that you can do as well. Um, there's a version of VVD. Is it the gold? No, it's not the gold. There's a version of VVD, I thought, that you could put into Incisive Pass and then into Supreme Defender. Maybe this is just one that you hang around with because it just is a two-play style plus defender. 
that's kind of the requirement there with the stats. Maybe there's somebody else you end up evolving in the next 20 days that you could put into this and get yourself a intercept plus on top of that card. So maybe it's just one that you hang around and don't complete straight away. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just decent, right? It's not that amazing. It's just there. Um, now, I do want to talk about store packs for a quick second. I opened another 650k pack yesterday, and it was not good. It was halfway saved by the fact that I got bent on core, which is a W for me. And I'm actually really excited to try this card out and hoping that Uruguay can do decent, even though they're the same group as the USA in the Copa America. Um, but to mention store packs, guys, the 525k pack that I mentioned in yesterday's video, it was taken away prematurely. That is a fact, but there actually was a timer on it. And I did not realize this right away. There was a timer on that um, pack and EA changed the timer so that it expired. At one point it said like, you know, 10 hours or something left, right? And then it changed all of a sudden. It said one hour left and then it expired and they took it away. Was it because of the pack weight on that pack being too good? Probably. They have not come out and said anything about it. Will they? Probably not. Um, Hopefully they do, but I don't know. Hopefully they re-release it as well. If they do, it's probably going to have different odds. But that is the situation on the 525k pack. A lot of you guys were commenting last night in the video about that. Uh, so I wanted to kind of mention that and clear that up. Now, let's talk about the investments that are being super, super popular this week. I've already made some buys, guys. You can see here I bought an Undav for 185 and I bought a Saliba for $1.5 million coins let's talk about investing in these live path to glory cards because it's live cards and packs and if you guys have been around in this game for a while you've known that the live cards this year have been some of the best investments of the whole entire year it's basically been free money if you take a look back earlier remember like oh, that's last year fifa 23 remember these fantasy cards like politano everybody bought politano at like twenty thousand coins and literally Five days later, he was 50K and he absolutely flew. These fantasy cards, this is the most recent opportunity for a great all-in investment. The road to the final cards, road to the knockout cards from earlier on this year as well. Live promo cards have done insane. And I think it's going to be no different this time around. So the questions are, who do we buy and when do we buy them, right? Let's look at these cards because some of them have already started to go up, right? Saliba, for example, I just picked him up at 1.5 million coins. As I look at his graph of how he's been moving in price, 1.5 mil isn't his lowest price. But I feel like as we get into the start of this week, we are nearing the lowest of the lows, right? This is kind of how it happened last year uh, during the World Cup mode and for those live cards, for those Path to Glories, and also earlier on this year for the fantasies in the Road to the Finals is that the live cards, they don't wait until the end of the week to start going up. People realize they're live. They try to invest early. They know they go up a lot. And these cards are pretty rare themselves. I think the rises are going to start happening between today and and Wednesday. I think by the time we get to Wednesday, guys, a lot of these cards are going to go up. So I picked up a Salibs at 1.5 because I've seen he's been down to 1.47, but then he randomly spikes to 1.7 mil. He was 1.7 just a couple hours ago. So I saw him back at 1.5 and I was like, you know what? I'm going to slide in there. It's a France upgrading card. Um, yes, there are still SBCs, namely Araujo, that are still leaked. They could impact this card and a center mid by the name of Enzo Fernandez, right? We've talked about that. There's still potential for the prices of these to really drop some in some panic because of the SBCs that were to get released. But I think we've seen a majority of the panic on the market as a whole, right? We looked at prices in yesterday's video as well. Harry Kane's actually up 30, 40 K from where he was yesterday. Um, some other cards are still down further, but the market's seeming to kind of like bottom out now. And I think we're in that kind of valley, if you'll call it that. And as we maybe look at the Jack Grealish graph, from last year as well, um, for the path to glories, he was lowest on Monday and Tuesday, right? He was around 90,000 coins, right? Even Wednesday, he was 98K, but that didn't matter. He went all the way up to 170,000 coins the next week as England started winning games during the World Cup. And the same sort of thing is probably going to happen for some of these path to glory cards. A lot of people have been asking, Nate, do you think there's going to be a team too that would mean maybe it's not a good time to invest in some of these cards and wait for the new cards that are going to come out? Honestly, no because I think EA doesn't like to have live and upgrading cards in packs while the games are going on. So I think, honestly, if we're going to invest in these live cards, which I think will be very profitable, and we'll be seeing these cards go up a lot in price as they get near their upgrades, and as they become, literally, these cards are going to be 
the best cards in the game. I mean, sure, we're going to have another promo this Friday with new cards that are going to come out, but that's part of the hype for these cards as well. They're already beyond team the seasons in terms of their stats, right? Imagine Italy wins their first game. Boom, Chiesa goes to 99 pace, 99 dribbling, and maybe 95, 96 shooting with a plus one in-form upgrade. That's the hype with a lot of these cards. So when you're looking at who to invest in, you want to look at the first couple of games, the groups that these guys are in, and the matchups that they have. That is what is crucial because you want to be investing in the nations that are favored to get wins, to get upgrades. This is foot.gg's tracker, by the way. If you go to foot.gg, Path to Glory Live Tracker, this tracker has got everything that you need, right? It can show you the groups. It can show you the different players from each nation. It can show you some FAQ even, some of the how the players upgrade. And then it can even show you all the fixtures. So like right here, it shows the first fixture of the Euros. You've got Germany versus Scotland. I like this ballot card as an investment. I'm not buying him yet because if we get an Enzo Fernandez SBC, he could drop a lot in price. But guys, this is this type of investment, by the way, just to add this in. This is an investment for any budget. This fuel crew card for like 35, 37,000 coins. He's really solid. Four star, five star. He could be a really fun card. Germany gets three wins and Undav and Fuel Krug. I've already bought some Undavs at 180K. These cards could really go up a lot in price. So it's not just for the higher budget cards like I'm looking at Saliba. Um, it's for any budget. Now, back to these cards. You're looking at these games and you're saying, okay, it's all about that first win, right? You want your card to go up the quickest and the fastest and start to have a rise. You want to look at those first games. Italy, like I love Dina Talley and Chiesa as investments. They're more expensive, but they're really rare. And Italy should be able to win against Albania, right? I'm a little bit less, um, you know, hyped about investing in Spanish cards because Pedri and Captavia and Danny Olmo, they got a tough matchup with Croatia right off the bat. You know, that sort of thing is something you want to kind of put in your mind. I think the English special cards like Saka and Walker, Kyle Walker's already started to go up, guys. Yesterday, he was 850,000 coins, and that was kind of his low point. He dropped off a lot. He went from 900K over a mil down to 860, and now he's around 900K. I think this Kyle Walker is going to end up being over a million coins. It's all about buying near the low. I don't know if you have to get the exact lowest price. Like if you didn't buy Kyle Walker today for 850, you missed out. No, probably not. These cards are going to rise enough because they're live and they're rare and they're cracked already that you're going to be able to even be a little bit late to the party per se and not get the lowest price and still get a good price and see cards go up. So that is kind of how we're thinking through this. Popular nations and meta players. Oh my gosh, 440? Nah, Julian Alvarez just hit a rarity spike. I have three of these at like 375K. I wish I would have went all in on this card, but he is flying. Um, I think now if you see Alvarez back at 400,000 coins because he is, I believe, the cheapest Argentine uh, that is going to be upgrading yeah DePaul is like 800 900 DePaul is for or uh, Alvarez is 400k that's why I started buying this card yesterday I hope he comes back down again um, and that's one thing I wanted to mention too if you're like Nate I wanted to buy Alvarez too he's already going up in price did I miss out probably not there's going to be more content today other SBCs coming out in the next two to three days that could push these prices down but I think we're getting into that low point we're in near the low and just what you need to do is decide the players that you want to buy and make sure you're watching those prices very closely. And when you see the price that you like, like this Di Natale, I'm probably not going to be able to watch this bid here on the video. But if I see this card for like 1.3 mil, 1.35 even, I'm in. This Bruno Guimaraes, a great example of a card who's in the mini release, guys. Mini release cards are always great to invest in too because they are more rare. That is one thing I want to shout out. That's why I like uh, Fuel Krug. I like him. I like Henkapi because of who's in their group and the potential that they have to win. And his card, Bruno Guimaraes, obviously Brazilian. And then, guys, I haven't even mentioned the icons yet. I mean, I just did here with Dean Natale, but the icons are going to be a sleeper, sleeper investment out of all of this, even though they're already expensive and some of them are like not representing the most kind of like meta nations in terms of wins. Like, yeah, you have Petit. I don't know. Petit to me, I don't like how his card looks, but maybe Balak as a German icon, this Di Natale as an Italian hero, uh, there's upgrades that are very, very possible. And all they have to do, right, is score goals for all of these icons and heroes. It's literally just score two 
and score four, and they get both of their upgrades, which seems a whole lot easier than winning one game and winning three games. So that's why I really, really like the icons and the heroes for an investment as well. If you find the right one at the right price, I bought a Haji yesterday. I just bought another one for under 1.1 mil. I'm trying to get the quick flip sale on that. So I'm being careful with some of these cards. I'm not just full sending investing everything into these because I want to be able to like watch the prices. And if like a insane cracked card today for Enzo Fernandez drops in the game and makes like Bruno Guimaraes and some of the other midfielders like Pedri and stuff drop, I want to be able to get involved at those dropping prices, right? Or same thing with center backs and Araujo. So I'm not going all in just yet, but I'm definitely starting to notice um, the cards that are moving better. The cards that fluctuate well on the market are the ones that will end up probably doing pretty well, um, you know, out of packs. Bukayo Saka is another one to mention. We already said his name. Um, you know, Pedri moves all the time. Chiesa is moving a lot. Saliba is already back up to 1.6. Kyle Walker does this all the time. So that is kind of what I mentioned with these cards is they're going to be great investments. They're going to be big, easy coins later on this week. And I think you need to start watching these cards and figuring out who you want to invest in so that when you see a low price, you can buy the card and not have to think twice. And then honestly, it's a hold. This investment is something where you can probably hold them for a week. I mean, obviously, if the team, like let's say you invest in Balak and let's say Germany lose that first game, uh, Muller doesn't get upgraded, everybody's sad, but Balak's going to drop a lot. There's going to be a lot of panic selling because they, they didn't win that first game and they were expected to, you know? That's one thing you have to consider with all of this. There could be some underdogs that end up uh, going up crazy in price. Like, don't sleep on even some of these guys like Zaluski, Kokchu, Schick, uh, even like Lukic. Like, maybe just put one of these on your transfer list if you have over a couple hundred thousand coins. Just because of the what-if scenario, if, uh, if they pull off an upset... There's going to be some big price rises there because they were not expected to win. And boom, all of a sudden, they've got an upgrade and a price is rising. So that is kind of what I mentioned. Oh, who's bidding 1.39 on this Dina Tale, bro? If you want to pay 1.4 mil, ooh, 1. See, this is tempting. This is a mad card for 1.3 million, man. And he's guaranteed to get one upgrade, probably going to get two, and going to be absolutely insane. But ooh, that's so tempting, guys. I'm going to have to think about that. I'm going to try to get a little bit lower than 1.39. Never mind, that one got insta bot. So yeah, he's right here at 1.4. I feel like this might be the low for him, especially for a lot of these cards. The hype's gonna turn in for the investments. And I think by the time we get to Wednesday, they are going to start rising. So obviously EA and the content here makes a big difference as we already mentioned with the SBCs. And we'll talk about that today. EA could drop some content. This is kind of like the disclaimer part, right? EA could drop content that makes these cards drop. You never know, right? There's always that variable, but with these, how meta they look, the stats and how they are, and the fact that they upgrade and have cracked looking upgrade potentials, um, yeah, a lot of these cards are going to do very, very well. So I think it's time today and tomorrow to start looking into some of those and making some investments when you see prices that you like. Do a little bit of research, watch the flipping graphs, and you'll be good to go. Now, let's talk about the cards that we could be seeing today. We've already mentioned it, right? The two players that can really cause some panic, per se, to the market would be an Enzo Fernandez and an Araujo, but we also have still a Jordan Pickford, Darwin Machis, and Lamer, who are leaked players. I mean, technically, if you would add that out, that is four more player SBCs, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four more days left of Path to Glory before we probably go into something else. Um, then, you know, I think it would be one of these per day, unless EA decide to double up or something like that. I don't know who it would be today, but I hope it's either Araujo or Enzo Fernandez, because think about it, right? If we're looking to invest in some of these cards and we create some panic, EA does, by releasing a really good SBC player, you know, maybe De Young would drop another 100K today. De Young was 1.4 million coins. He's probably not going to go above that or below that again. Um unless the Netherlands like lose like crazy in the first round or something, you know what I mean? But an Enzo could make his card drop. Same thing with Pedri, Enzo could drop. DePaul, DePaul will be somebody that, who's up a lot that I would watch very closely because Enzo is going to directly, directly impact his card price. So that's something to be careful with. But I think we get one of those player SBCs today. I think that's honestly a guarantee. Maybe we get two, but probably just one. The other big thing, it's, you know, the usual stuff that we get on Mondays would be the player picks we've had the 81 plus picks for the last week they've been eh, they've been decent but i think it's time for ea to release the 82 plus picks again if they're going on their normal schedule and i think if they're going to do that they'd also maybe rock with the 80 
four plus player pick alongside of it, unless they want to do something super nice and super different and give us something like an 80, I don't know, 86 plus player. Who says no? 86 plus player pick EA. Just do it for the boys. Let us have some fun, right? That sort of thing. That would be cool, but it's upgrade player pick day. So I think we get two player picks today, at least um, probably one of them being the 82 plus. That's our kind of grinded out player pick through the week. And guys, I actually sent a message to EA just a couple of hours ago. Um, just again, as I mentioned during the whole EA issues during team of the season, um, talking about, you know, feedback and correspondence. I hit him with a message. And I was like, yo, guys, the community really wants the daily bronze, gold and silver upgrades back. So I was, I'm hoping that they re-release those. I don't know what the reasoning is. I don't know if they're supposed to come back. Maybe they are set to come back and they just took a couple days off of them. I don't know. But those are really, really helpful, especially when we get new player picks like today for the grind, right? So I hope they re-release those and I hope they uh, listen to the community feedback um, from a lot of you guys commenting down in the videos and in the streams talking about it. Like, we need those back. We do. Those are really, really helpful for the grind. Also, we would like today some new XP. I know I'm behind, so like I got to get some work done to get some XP going. But uh, we've not had a lot of XP released in this game since uh, like the week honestly, like Friday, I'm hoping that we get some more objectives. I don't know if it's a player objective or it's some other sort of um, something that we can get some XP from because a lot of us, I feel like got a nice start out of the gates in terms of XP. Maybe some of you are already level four, level five, but now it's like, okay, I want to get to, to Siangov. I want to get to Vicario. I personally would love to get there. Maybe even this Cascaria card, like trying to progress in the season. It feels like we started off great, and now it's been slow running. So we'll see if we get some XP today. Uh, and then honestly, for me, like today's going to be a day where I'm hoping to just grind the upgrade packs to pack some of these cards. We're going to be watching the market super duper close. Um, as you know, like yesterday, I finally packed a card out of an upgrade in 85.5. We hit um, O block. And then I did open another 650K with the Benton core, as I mentioned, which was not the greatest. But today's going to be a weekend league day for me. Got to get these games in. I don't know who I'm going to start instead of Joe Salou, but I'm not starting Joe Salou. Um, Tiago was fun. I'm sure Benton core is going to be great. And I'm really excited to try out Joe Gomez in our three back setup, attacking three back setup where defense is a four back. Um, it's going to be a fun one. So this is the team currently at the moment, but Joe Salou is going to be out and somebody else is going to come in. I, he, maybe, I don't think Lautaro would get chemistry, but somebody else is going to go in there instead of him. But yeah, today's going to be a champs gameplay day for me and kind of grinding the menu since I missed out a little bit of that on the weekend. But I'm glad I've made some buys already, and I would just caution you guys to be very like, um, I don't know, be aggressive with the buys because these are always the types of cards that do well because they're live, but also be smart with it at the same time. Um, I'm not spending all my coins investing on these cards. I'll be investing smartly. I'll leave some coins left over uh, for quick flips and trades and stuff like that because, you know, we all got to have some coins laying around to do the odd player pick or buy the odd whatever here or there for some fodder. But uh, yeah, guys, that's uh, that's the video for me today. We're going to be watching the market a lot this week because these cards just kind of command that. So watch the icons, watch the PTGs. And we will see what sort of content we get today. That link, uh, if you want to see us on stream, is down below in the description. We'll be re reacting to the content that we get today, grinding through the menus, playing some champs for those ultimate rewards, and seeing if we can hit any PTGs because packing a live card is just as fun as making coins on it through an investment, at least in my opinion. So I'm going to see if I can win this Dina Tally, be a little bit more broke, but then maybe have some coins coming in our way down the line. If you enjoyed the video today, drop a thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in the stream today. It's been Native Accounts. Catch you guys there. Peace out.